Welcome back, our co-host, Mr. Matt Harvey, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney. Good morning. New York Times best-selling author, John Gilstrap. Good morning. And the aforementioned PJ Orsini. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Little Dean Martin to bring you in there, PJ. Wanted to bring the balance of power back to even in here. Two on two, baby. Yep. And McLaughlin is part Italian in there, so we got a power play going on three on two. Well, you know, deal the, with it, Harvey. From the famous McLaughlin Italian, the Italian McLaughlin <laughs> yeah. clan. Right, that's the. It's on his mother's side. Yeah. <laughs> it counts one drop of blood. No, no, it's his dad. His dad's mother. That's what it is. Oh. His dad's mother. Yeah. So, uh, PJ, you got something going on this weekend? Let's get to it. We do. Saturday, we're going to have our second annual Turkey Bowl. Have the Traggers, the Gosney Pizza Ovens, and the. Big green eggs rolling all afternoon, I think from 11 to 3, 11 to 4. Mm -hmm. should probably know that. Yeah, are you cooking for free? Yes, absolutely. Have them all going. We'll have some factory reps here. We're supposed to have another brand, but they aren't going to make it. So three good ones out there. Everything Thanksgiving, everything on the uh, on the cookers and the ovens. Yeah, and uh, so when you when you walk by or drive by, it's impossible not to be sucked up by the aromas within a block or so? That's the plan, yeah, absolutely. Man. That's tough to deal with. We got lots. Of, we have a lot more room out there now than we did at the old store, so we can take all the eaters we need. Dude, I had a, a neighbor who had a Traeger, and he did his turkey there. And while I was out in the back raking leaves because we were having dinner at their house for Thanksgiving, that aroma was wafting down the backyard, three houses away. You should be that guy now. You were like all afternoon long. You were like Pepe Le Pew. You just, <laughs> yeah, the exactly. aroma lifted you up just and following you it. it. <laughs> we can yeah. make you the guy. I could be the guy. You could be the guy. It, it was so good. I, if you haven't had a turkey that way before. Man, what's what's what makes it so good? We're cooking with uh, wood pellets. Your your source of heat is wood, so the wood acts like another ingredient. We'll have uh, the pizza ovens will be rolling. We'll be doing some stuff with turkey with them, and then the big green egg will be charcoal. So we'll have propane, we'll have charcoal, and we'll have wood going. Be a fun way to cook. Charcoal makes everything taste different. It's a it's a gas is fine, but something about charcoal. Yeah. Uh, Trigger does it better, I think. The wood pellets, getting that wood flavoring in there, cooking with wood. We can cook low, slow, add that little bit of stuff to it. Mm -hmm. It's out of the three, we do the pizza ovens. Uh, Gosney's probably my favorite brand we sell. They're a yeah. lot of fun, but we the Trigger's like a second oven. We barely use the oven in the house anymore. The, the pizza is like a big thing in the last couple of years. That's become something that people are just, just I'm doing my own pizza. And they're yep. doing it this way. Those ovens make it so quick, 90 seconds, we're knocking out a pizza. 90 second pizza. That's, That's unbelievable. Yeah. So is is turkey the only protein that you're cooking? Oh no, on? there'll be we, we kind of focused around Thanksgiving because we're right there, but we'll also have, um, of course, everything to do with the pizza. I'm sure there'll be some ham, pork, uh, chicken of some sort. Everything we cook on the ovens, uh, it'll be all, all all hands on deck. We'll be doing pies on it, macaroni and cheese. Uh, basically, anything you can cook for a Thanksgiving meal, we'll be using one of the cookers to do, or if not multiple. How many people you have cooking? I have the factory rep from Gosney, from Bree, uh, I'm sorry, from uh, Big Green Egg, and then my Traeger guy isn't going to make it, so I'll probably be manning that one. So there'll probably be four to five of us all in. How many years has it been since you took over for your dad full-time? I bought the business in 2016. 2016, okay. That's when all the gray really appeared. Because <laughs> you're really only 27 years old, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So what's the difference between Orsini's in 2016 and Orsini's as we head into 2025? 2016, there was... 10 or 11 of us four were family which is way too many um <laughs> i think and then the showroom of course was 2400 square foot the building runs 18,000 the showroom's uh seven or eight thousand and there's i think we're pushing 30 people on our team now so we're much bigger we're handling tons of builder work we've expanded in outdoor kitchens cabinets flooring um, we're not just as you all say not just doing appliances anymore there's a lot more to it um we're a lot more specialty you know, with the box stores kind of just being a place you can walk in and buy and walk out. We match their pricing, but you're getting our guys to do all the work. You're getting the service on the back end. So it's still us. It's still me. That place kind of owns me. So I'm always there. Um, but all the service that, you know, this will be November is kind of our year. This will be our 77th year in business. That's so, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So was this part of the vision in 2016 or did this kind of happen as you Learn more and more about the business. Yeah, I wanted to go bigger, and they didn't. They wanted to uh, retire. Dad, of course, opened up his antique shop downtown, so he retired to open another business, which seems to be what we do around here. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to go much bigger, and they didn't quite want to go as large as I did. And we just kind of sat down and said, what do you guys want to do? And they supported me and said, here's what the business costs. Buy it. So off we ran. Then uh, 2018, I bought the building, ran out on Hack Wilson Way, and then 
We opened November of 2019. So we've just, we never knew what month my grandfather opened up in 1948. So we just kind of picked November as the anniversary month because that's when I opened up the new location. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. How, how have the products changed in those nine years, eight years? They used to last a lot longer back then, mm -hmm. uh, way, way back when. Um, the, the cool stuff now is all the connected stuff. We have grills that are connected, dishwashers, refrigerators, everything that's going through the Wi-Fi and the connection. The efficiency of everything these days is much better than it's ever been. Um, but for the most part, you know, we're a big Whirlpool, big GE. Most of their products are considered made in America. I'm really picky on that. I was on the other side of the country last week visiting a plant. There's a brand that wants me to bring their product in, and I wouldn't do anything until I saw how it's made, went through the plant. So I spent 36 hours on the other side of the country just visiting a plant, talking to executives. So we're real picky on what we bring in. If you don't see it on my floor, there's a reason for it. So you said you visited the plant. You want to see how it's made. What are you looking for? Uh, quality. I want to see where the parts are done. I mean, this place mills and cuts most of their own stamps, their own metal. It's a very high quality product. It's an expensive product. Now I have to do the research to make sure this is the right market for it. But um, I mean, everybody wants to be on our floor. Every brand wants a presence in there, but I'm picky. I have to sell it, fix it. And if you want to come yell at me, I'm at the end of the hall. <laughs> How have electronics changed appliances for the better and the worse? Um, the connectivity is the best part, I think. If you want to use it and you do enjoy it, you've got full the ability to fully cater the appliance to you. The cool thing about connectivity in the next year, 18 months, is going to be I'll be able to remote diagnose your appliances for service rather than having to come out. So we'll be about 40% more efficient. You'll be able to do firmware updates. Imagine how nice it would be to have broadband internet that at means, your house that, that would allow you to well, connect to things. That would coming, be wonderful. It's coming, that John. Means, yeah, yeah, uh, be, it's coming. Great. That means now our appliances are spying on us. That's what it means. Like that chip that they put in your body with the vaccine. Exactly. Now they're talking to each other, my refrigerator and my vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a question. 15, 20 years ago, it took, you know, 45 minutes to, to run the dishwasher. Now it takes two hours. Yeah, what's about that? Well, you're using, uh, I think these new ones are running anywhere between two and three quarter, three and a half gallon of water. And it's a lot cheaper to run that brushless motor. So I think on average, an E-Star dishwasher right now costs you between 11 and 13 cents to do an entire cycle. Rather than, you know, when you're factoring in the price of the old one, you were using six to eight gallons of water. They have to factor in the price of running your water heater to heat the water up. So it's cheaper to run that, that motor longer than it is to continuously bring in water, waste water. The old machines, the way way old ones used to be 10 to 12 gallons of water. These new ones are so efficient. On half cycles, you're talking less than two gallons. So it's same thing with um, refrigerators. People say all the time, my grandmother's lasted 30 years. It did. It probably cost you 25 to $30 a month throughout those 30 years to run it. These new ones are running between 7 and $9 a month. So the efficiency is there. The life expectancy isn't quite as long. But when you run the math, you could buy three to one, the old stuff versus the new stuff. That's a good point. And, and that point, I uh, made this comment to you when you walked in, is that I'm, I've almost stopped. If it's out of warranty, I almost don't repair anything anymore because it seems to be less expensive or nearly as expensive to get it fixed uh, as it is to just buy a new one. It depends on what you're looking at. I mean, refrigerators are refrigerators. Those are typically something that's repaired. Some of the new laundry, but a microwave you throw away, mm -hmm. um, things like that. We still have a technician that's going to run. I think he's set up for nine or 10 calls at least today. When he gets done, he comes back, looks for more work and goes back out and runs them. So they stay, we still stay very busy with service. Um, you know, a lot of our property management, property managers we deal with want to fix stuff still. And, but refrigerators, front load laundry, the new high end laundry, uh, high efficiency stuff, it's relatively easy to fix. A lot of problems in this area, the hard water. So water valves, things like yeah. that. Those are like brakes on a car. That's something you fix. I must never buy an extended warranty on an appliance, should I? Yeah. Nowadays, yes. Everything's board driven. Your main, Motherboards. You, yeah. Everything is. Our toasters we have now are. So, you know, the, um, Appliances, the warranties all cover manufacturer defects. They don't cover power surges. The biggest killer of uh, appliances in this area is power surges. So that's the the product we sell called Epic is the company we deal with. They handle, one of the big things we wanted was they don't make it hard for someone to get a claim in. We can do the work. There's just a, you have to call them first and we can do it. But power surges is the big one. Do you, you vet the uh, warranty companies? Absolutely. I went a year without having an extended warranty product because I didn't like anything we got uh, sent to us. And then the one we did, same thing, met them at a meeting, spent about an hour with them, have a bunch of stuff in writing and vetted other dealers in the country that I know use them. And 
you know, guys that are much larger than us and guys that are smaller than us just to see how the operations went. So far, so good. What's a typical motherboard cost to replace and say a high-end washing machine? Well, where you start out with my service call is $118. Mm-hmm. So a board can be anywhere between 80 and 200. So typically one service call pays for the extended warranty. I hope you never use it. I hope it's a waste of money. But the reality of it is if we come out one time, you made your money back. How long does a, an appliance last now? Um, we're seeing 10 years in that ballpark, 8 to 10, 10 to 12, depending on what you go after. I'm picky. There's a couple brands I won't sell. Uh, the back end is terrible. There's the what does that mean? The uh, parts allocation, the tech support. You know they don't make books anymore on how to service stuff. You go into a house, you run it through diagnostics, you call tech support. It's not like the old days where my grandmother could keep a timer for every washer in stock, and you come and grab one. Everything's board driven. There's not boards that are universal. So, you know that's kind of if I sell it to you, you don't want to wait three weeks to get your washer fixed. If I can't get a part, let's say that part's made in Korea, because that's where the products are manufactured, it's a nightmare. And for three weeks, you're mad at me. Mm-hmm. So we're real picky on where the stuff comes from. Everything will break. I mean, it's the nature of what we sell. But we try to find things where the majority of it's made in America. I'm ordering it from Ohio rather than, you know, Korea, China, places like that. Does it matter if you buy low end or, I don't know, Wolf, still same, same lifespan? Um, no, your higher end stuff, we're seeing that 10 to 12 life out of it. Um, once again, power surges can kill anything, whether it's a week old or 10 years old. That's the biggest killer on them. But on the higher end stuff, you know, appliances are like vehicles. They perform, what you pay for is what you get. The, it's not so much when you spend more, you're getting more, but you get higher high temperatures like on a stove, lower lows. Uh, same thing with refrigeration. And when you buy like a Wolf, you're buying a cooker, a performance cooker. So can we protect against power surges out at the box at the in the garage uh i think yeah i mean i know with my house when we redid it we put a, uh, a meter with a surge suppressor on it but that's still only going to catch the intermediate the hardest part with the power right now is a, like a brownout where it kind of goes out and kind of goes back in very hard on electronics um we have uh surge protectors that are for appliances are good to throw on certain things but you know if you're going to get one they're going to get one what do you got going on this weekend again pj turkey bowl Come on out. We're going to have uh, all types of deals going on. The Gosney pizza ovens, we got a good deal going on those. Tons of Yeti stuff in there. Uh, the Black November, Black Friday pricing began today. So for the next month, everything's going to be so probably be the cheapest time. You're going to see it throughout the end of the year. And your next big, big sale won't be until July 4th. So if you're holding out to get something else, the time to come in uh, and, and get Pretty good savings. All right. So this is exactly three weeks from Thanksgiving today. So this is the 7th on the 28th, Thanksgiving Day, which is the latest it can be, November 28th. What is the PJ Orsini Thanksgiving recipe for cooking the for cooking the bird? What's the best piece of equipment to cook it on? And, and tell me how you prepare it. So we'll be doing it on the Traeger Timberline. Don't know how I'm going to do it this year. Every year I do it a little different. I'll probably be using – we have a new um, – maple pellet they just came out with i'll probably play with it it's a medium smoke uh don't know how i'm gonna do it this year i've done a cajun style before using some meat church products i've done a uh, bourbon glaze before where we brined it with a meat church kit and some jim beam honey um so i don't really know how i'm gonna do this year i think we've got a couple new rubs in there i might try out see what they do but definitely going to brine it in one of the meat church kits um probably going to do it with the Traeger maple and we'll do it on the timberline i'll spatchcock it where you break the uh, uh breast the cut the spine out break the uh, breastplate down. So we'll probably do about a 22 pound bird, take about four hours, four and a half hours. What nice temperature? And slow. Probably start it out on smoke at around 225 and cook it at 325 until it's done. What's that, when do you, at what point do you change it from the 225 to the 325? Um, you're only gonna get so much smoke into a piece of poultry. So probably I'll go an hour, hour and 15 smoking. So I get enough in there, then I'll crank it up just to cook it. Hey, I heard that you should clean your oven before Thanksgiving meal. You know, it's funny you say that, Matt. <laughs> I love that in my industry. Feel free. Uh, yeah, definitely. I said it on here once. I was, we were talking about it before we walked in. I, my favorite time of year is the week before Thanksgiving. Or in the week before that, people always self-clean their oven. And if you have an older oven, chances are the power going through that clock is going to kill it, And which is great for us. We have tons of ovens to get out to you. We'll be open up until Thanksgiving uh, Day. So thank you, Matt. Appreciate so it. Don't, so don't wait talk, until the morning of them. If, if somebody comes to the Turkey Bowl this weekend and they wander through the showroom and they find that oven, they just want it for Thanksgiving, yep. can they have it by Thanksgiving? Absolutely. I mean, we're lucky. We're, we do, I have five delivery teams on the road. 
we dedicate them to some to build or some to local, wherever they need to be. Uh, we're typically same day or next day delivery. If you walk in at four, I can't do same day, but you know, refrigerators are an emergency. When they go, we try to get them out same day. I probably have six or 700 appliances in stock. We deal with a lot of builders that need their stuff, you know, next day, same day, whenever we can. So yeah, there's in this time of year, we load up the showroom and the warehouse. So if you want to come in and pick something, we can get you cooking in stock. If it's not the same day, it's next day. Will you haul away my old one too? Absolutely. We recycle it out the door. They go and it comes back as a car or can something next time. Matt's wristwatch, maybe. I don't know. There you go. Hey, what? I, I don't what, wear wristwatches. What's the next uh, thing that you're seeing in the industry that's uh, going to be the thing that you sell that's going to be big? In the cabinet world, we're seeing more of the soft tone and woods, uh, wood colors coming back. It's been paint for the last decade. White, sure. right? Uh, it, we're actually, they're saying that uh, white oak is going to be the next big thing uh, and then some softer tones coming in. So we're hopefully we get through this holiday and into quarter one next year, I'm going to gut a couple displays and put some new stuff in. Um, multiple colors are really cool. Uh, quartz is still the best selling counter in the kitchen stuff. It's the most expensive too, is it not? It's like granite it has levels. Yeah. There's level one, level five. So it can be, um, appliance wise. Uh, I think you're gonna see more of the connected stuff. Induction ranges are going to keep going with what, the government's doing to gas, trying to get gas out of homes. So, is that legit? Is that really is some of the pressure that you're seeing in the industry? I, I'm not, but places like DC, Baltimore, New York, where they're doing high rise buildings, are not letting them run gas all through the buildings. Mm -hmm. And you can get the same efficiency twice as fast with induction, just a 50 amp breaker. I bet that pressure goes away. <laughs> <laughs> as, as of last Tuesday. As, yeah. Pick your state, it's but yeah. it's the, the industry's prepping for that. Um, so, I do see that going. And then in outdoor, just more and more out of Traeger. I've seen a little bit of what they've got coming. We'll be uh, the only uh, dealer in the state and in the region that gets their new ranges. I'll have those coming in the beginning of December. Their new cookers will be in here. Um, I'm getting three. They don't launch until March. So we'll have them on display to check out and take some pre-orders. We're the only diamond dealer in the state for them. And then Gosnier Pizza Oven Company, same thing. They have some really cool stuff coming. We'll get that in February, I think. What do you pay for a pizza oven? They started, uh, well, uh, they're going on promo here for uh, Black November, so they'll start at three ninety nine for the portable ones. Mm -hmm. We take them to WVU, Shepherd Games all the time. How big of a pizza can I make in that? 12-inch. Yep, about 90 seconds. We'll take half a dozen doughs with us and just spend them the whole time while we're doing, getting them going. We'll have a really good deal on the Dome S1. It's a large oven where you can put your cast iron skillets in, make bread, things like that. Those, they're doing a promo um, down to nine ninety nine. That's a fourteen ninety nine oven. I only have six of those, so when they're going, they're going. Uh, a little bigger, not real portable. They're meant for a back patio or something like that, but great, great ovens. Um, same thing with Traeger. Big green eggs are fun, but you know you can't really change as much as to add more accessories to those. I've got another brand or two for the outdoor that I'm doing some uh, research into and playing with before we decide if we want to bring them in. What What is the benefit of a big green egg? It's a commodity-style cooking, so you're cooking with a – you know a piece of like let's say pottery kind of thing if you will it's it's an even cooking where you're doing lower heats it tends to keep more of the moisture in it's we tend to see more people that like big green egg or people that have more time on their hands they're retired they can turn up the charcoal and let it go with the trigger being on their wi-fi i can monitor it from my phone sitting here if you're out you know, putting someone in jail, you can make sure that brisket's cooking from work and two for one action, you know? I have, I have a big green egg and I have a problem regulating the low temperature over time, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it'll, it's, it's charcoal. So you, and you, and you work with the airflow to get it to a certain temperature, but that doesn't mean it's going to always stay there. So you get, I get the mm -hmm. spikes. I'm not very good at it, I guess. And, and that's the only problem I have. I, I love it. I love cooking on it, but it's, Come in on Saturday, they have a device called Egg Genius hooked up to your Wi-Fi in the app. It'll adjust it for you to keep it. And then Jeff, the factory rep, will be here on Saturday, too. It'll but, adjust the little slider thing? Yep. Really? Yep. Cool. Okay. You, you can take your complaints straight to the factory. Straight right? to right. the guy. You can't beat right. that, right? And Mr. I will tell you, Mr. Big Green Egg. if you want to hear movers cuss, <laughs> moving that green egg. They're, they're, are a, they heavy? They're oh, heavy? my goodness, yes. They're heavy. We delivered an XL to Percival, and it was... It comes in on a pallet in two separate boxes. It's a monster to put together. What's it weigh? Oh, total, it's probably 400 pounds. That's why it's in two halves. You And this was already assembled. We had it at the old house, and they were moving it to the new house. It was yeah. lots of I think we'll have a, more than a piano. I think we'll have a large. I think we'll have a large that we use for demos. The XL is just too big, too big to move for us. 
That's astounding. 400 pounds? Yeah. For that? Goodness. All right, uh, let, let's wrap it up here, PJ. Lot. i got a minute and a half. Let's talk about Saturday. Well, come on out and join us. Uh, you know, we'll be cooking all afternoon, all types of stuff. Uh, haven't quite decided what we're going to do in the Traeger, but I, I think you'll see anything that has to do with Thanksgiving, mac and cheese. Um, we'll do pies, you know, a- anything you can basically cook on one. We'll definitely have some turkey going uh, on two of the three cookers. We'll do some sort of turkey thing with the Gosney pizza ovens. Big Green will be there for you to come out and play with those guys. Specials going all day. Uh, and then – Watch all the socials, the Facebook, the Instagrams. Uh, she has a lot of specials and savings coming up going into the holidays. bunch of Yeti stuff, a bunch of uh, other items we have in there, like the rubs and sauces. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot good. of good gift ideas. I can smell the turkey already, man. That's good. I'm getting hungry as we do this. <laughs> it was spread from the first minute on, man. PJ, good to see you again. Thanks for having me. I'm going to send you out with some Frank Sinatra. I brought you with some Dean Martin. I'm going to send you out with Francis Albert Sinatra. Love it. Good to see you.